Let's take a look at what teachers would be up against if they were armed with a handgun and confronted with a weapon like an AR-15. An AR-15 style rifle, well that's a semi-automatic weapon, meaning the fire, it fires one round when the trigger is pulled, then automatically reloads the chamber, making it ready to fire again. Handguns can also be semi-automatic, but some, like revolvers, they're not, meaning it can take a lot longer to fire multiple rounds. Another big difference, the speed of bullets. The AR-15 can fire bullets between 2,800 and 3,000 feet per second. A 9mm handgun, between 700 and 1,100 feet per second. The AR-15 can hold much more ammunition than a handgun. A typical AR-15 magazine holds 30 bullets, while a 9mm handgun holds 15. Magazines that hold more are available for each firearm. One doctor who has seen AR-15 and handgun injuries gives a stark comparison of the damage each firearm can do to a person's body. She says, quote, routine handgun injuries leave an entry and exit wound and linear tracks throughout the victim's body that are roughly the size of a bullet. When she saw the damage from a Parkland victim, she said the organ looked like an overripe melon smashed by a sledgehammer with extensive bleeding. I want to bring in Malcolm Nance, MSNBC terrorism analyst, retired from the U.S. Navy. Malcolm, you have trained for years. As a fighter in the military, you've fired weapons dozens of times. I've never done anything like it. Walk me through what happens to your body in the middle of danger. Well, you know, the psychology and physiology of, of, of what happens in a firefight is completely dependent on the individual. Everybody behaves differently. I mean, uh, the way I, I felt the first time someone ever shot at me, which was overseas in a, in a military operation in, in, uh, in, in the Middle East, it, you know, I, I froze up for about a second and then realized I was in mortal danger and looked for cover. You're, you're, you have to be trained to want to get up and go into fire. And that's what the armed forces does for you. Uh, I went through SWAT officer training when I got out of the military. And the first thing they do is they teach you is to really lock up and then move in on a target. And that's what active shooter uh, training is for in law enforcement. But if you're not really trained, you're not proficient, it's not like the movies. And the movies have nothing to do with reality. You are putting yourself where you could be killed. Okay. It's as simple as that. It, then let's walk through that difference, because this idea that a teacher could have a concealed weapon, I mean, that's a pistol, that's a handgun. When a mass shooter enters a school, and when we usually see this happen, they're wearing protective headgear, they're wearing, you know, a, a Kevlar vest. It's not like it's a cat burglar in your bedroom pulling uh, your wedding ring out of a drawer and you pull a tiny handgun uh, and go after them. What is it like when an AR-15 is going after your body and you've got a handgun? Well, that, uh, again, you know, that's really a matter of understanding and training. We have a lot of people who are going on, you know, what they think they see in the movies. Uh, if you've got a handgun and that's all the tool that you have, you have to be extremely well trained to go out and engage someone who has a fully automatic or semi-automatic weapon. Let me tell you, a semi-automatic weapon fired in rapid sequence is just as good. Uh, we had a certain, you know, and to be quite honest, depending on the distance that you're away, you have to understand, for, the civilians don't understand, in close quarters, the first thing that you're going to have to experience is the explosive sound of the weapon going off, not yours, the shooters. It practically deafens you in, a, in, a, in an urban environment, inside of a school building like that. It's not like the movies where you can actually hear. It's like someone stabbing your ear with a knife. So if you can get past that, and still move, you will be conducting a gun battle, a fire fight, with people running back and forth in front of you. It's just, you know, unless you are a very, very skilled uh, soldier or a police officer who has already been through that, through simulation or through an actual incident, it's, it, you cannot even start to predict the effect. All right, I don't know Ivanka Trump's expertise uh, in the world of guns, <laughs> but it sounds as though she's kind of supporting her father's idea to arm some teachers. And I want to share what she told NBC's Peter Alexander. I think that having a teacher who is armed, who cares deeply about her students um, or his students, and who is capable and qualified to bear arms is not a bad idea, but it's an idea that needs to be discussed.
Ivanka says that's not a bad idea. What do you think? That's a ludicrous idea. It's just the worst idea I've ever heard. Look, when I went through SWAT training, uh, and, and we would come into a scenario where we had a hostage barricade or a suspected one. The first thing we're doing is we come in weapons high and we're looking for your hands. I see a handgun, we're going to engage. And that's what law enforcement does. If you are a teacher who thinks you're doing a defensive, you know, pose and protecting a student, law enforcement will just assume you're the shooter. And if we start introducing five, ten guns into that school, the, the, the complexity of target identification and clearance and knowing whether that individual is safe or whether they're actually complicit and waiting for you to turn your back, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Law enforcement will go to the default, which is to shoot the person with the gun. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.